Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, and I know some of you don't necessarily like it when I boast on these videos about how right I was, so I'm going to be a little bit brief with this. But I nailed Rayquaza GX, ladies and gentlemen. I was right. I say I was right. I had no say in this whatsoever. All I was doing was reporting what was sent to me by a friend who lived in Japan. And at the time, there was nowhere outside of Japan where this information had been posted. At least nowhere I could find it. Apologies if it was somewhere else. And it does exactly what we said it was going to do. Yay! Now, some of you in the comment section of that Rayquaza video did point out that, hang on a second, Rayquaza having a grass lightning attack cost? Well, that doesn't seem right. Rayquaza's always had fire lightning, and you are correct, but that's how it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're in at the moment. And actually, a few people did point out that a bunch of dragons have had the attack cost changed in the sun and moon era so maybe it's not that unbelievable now the reason i'm posting a video about this when i did the video yesterday yesterday was a speculation video based on rumor that i believe but rumor nonetheless today we've got the image we know what it does and when people are searching for what rayquaza gx does i want them to find a video with an image where we're sure rather than a video where we're speculating so then they have to go and search for new information now, the image is apparently from Korokoro Magazine, that's what I heard yesterday. It has been posted today by PokerBeach.com, who have got a translation up, and it is exactly in line with the translation I posted yesterday, so we can go ahead with that translation thinking, you know what, that's right. And the good news is here, we can also use the ideas that were given yesterday to make this video better than the previous one. So it's got 180 HP, which is actually annoying because it means that the Dene will be a legitimate counter to Rayquaza. Choice banned, lightning Pokemon on the bench, and you get a one-hit KO, which I think is necessary here. It's got a weakness to Fairy, which means it will lose to Dedene, and it will be smashed by Gardevoir. You need free energy on there. Gardevoir will make an absolute mockery of you. It has a retreat cost of free, which means you get about a month of using Heavy Ball. And it's a Dragon Pokemon, so you get access to Devoured Field to do a little bit of extra damage, and Mysterious Treasure to search out your Rayquaza, but you don't actually get... To hit anything for weakness. What you do get, however, is Zinnia. And the great thing about Zinnia is it's this card that if you had a Pokemon KO'd during your opponent's last turn, you get to attach up to two basic energy from your hand to one of your Dragon Pokemon. So that's another type of energy acceleration which is going to be absolutely great here. Now, the ability, according to my confidant over in Japan, is that you get to discard the top three cards of your deck when you play it, not once per turn, it's only when you play it to the bench. And then you can attach an energy, basic energy, from your discard pile. We think it's to this Pokemon. It might be to any of your Pokemon, but we believe it is to this Pokemon. Now, the good news is, if you discard the top three cards of your deck, you may well discard a basic energy. The bad news is, if you don't already have a basic energy in your discard, this is incredibly risky. In terms of you might not discard an energy, you might just lose some cards off the top of your deck. One of the presumptive best partners for this is Vikavolt. And if you end up discarding a bunch of Vikavolt or especially rare candy using this ability, that's a bit of a pain. I should also point out that if you start with Rayquaza on the bench, then you never get to play it down onto the bench, which means you lose the ability. But I do really want to mention here that with cards like Energy Switch and Multi Switch, you could potentially get two Rayquaza abilities and a Multi Switch in a turn, or an energy switch, and then you could actually get free energy on one Rayquaza, turn one, and you could be doing 90 damage, or potentially more, going second on your first turn of the game. This is a card that can legitimately donk, and it's been a little while since we had a good card that can do a fair amount of damage. Your opponent goes first and passes with a Lone Zorua on the field. If you can get two Rayquaza on the bench, an energy and an energy switch, you're going to win the game turn one. That's pretty sweet. But the main attack here really is the main draw. 
Grass Lightning Colorless 30 damage times the number of basic grass and lightning energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Now, for those people asking, yes, Venusaur will mean that this counts double because it means that your basic grass count is two basic grass, but I don't think Venusaur is the way to go. If you're going for a stage two here, you want to go for Vikavolt. Vikavolt allows you to attach a grass and a lightning energy from your deck to one of your Pokemon once during your turn. Firstly, this means that you can get a Rayquaza going, and I know it is pronounced Rayquaza, but I... Ugh. You get it going in a single turn, which is nice, but also... If you get, say, a couple of these out, or you just don't have a Rayquaza knocked out, then you can keep piling energy onto the bench. A lot of people have said, oh, I don't know, I prefer Tapu Bulu Vikavolt. But firstly, Tapu Bulu can only hit 210 with a choice band. Rayquaza can literally hit any number you need it to. And Tapu Bulu discards the energy to do that. So if your opponent comes out and ability locks you with something like a Garboda in the short term or maybe a slacking in the longer term then you're actually not going to be able to do this whereas wayquaza has got a whole bunch of other options here that it can use instead and I think some of these options are really good obviously you want to be using max elixir at least until it's rotated about a month after this card comes out Obviously, you've got the ability here, but there's other things we can do. I've already mentioned Zinnia, which is great. And I really stand by Beast Ring here. You can play stuff like Feromosa or Zerkatry. And the reason you play them over others is just because you can attack with them if you need to. And then when your opponent's got three or four prizes remaining, you can use Beast Ring to accelerate energy onto these, and every Beast Ring you drop is an extra 60 damage for your active Rayquaza. If you've got eight energy on the field, you're doing 240. Your Rayquaza goes down, you lose three of those energy. You've still got five energy on the field, and you've still got all these other options for attaching energy. You're going to get one extra from your hand per turn, but maybe your Rayquaza gets KO'd, your opponent goes down to four prizes, and you play a Zinnia and a Beast Ring and attach from your hand, that's five extra energy without using something like a Vikavolt. And one of the cards I really, really like with this is Arceus Prism Star. It's not a card we get to talk about very often, but Arceus has got an amazing attack for one colorless energy. If you've got Grass, Water, and Lightning Pokemon on your bench, you do 30 damage, and you attach free basic energy from your deck to your Pokemon in any way that you like. Now, Arceus is a colorless and Rayquaza is a dragon, which is a pain, but you're probably going to be playing grass and lightning Pokemon anyway, so if you add in a water Pokemon, and let's face it, you need some draw power, 1-1 one, one Octillery, you could potentially have Arceus here be accelerating from your deck until it gets knocked out, and then the turn it gets knocked out, you can drop a Zinnia to accelerate another 2 energy, and then potentially use stuff like Beast Ring and all later on. There are so many options for accelerating energy, with this and you do so much damage with this attack it's just phenomenal and i'm sorry i don't think vikavolt tapu bulu is better tapu bulu's got a lower output needs a choice band to ko most of the best pokemon in the format like boswell and zoroark and is incredibly vulnerable to ability lock in a way that rayquaza just doesn't have to be and we've got a really good gx attack here as well discard your hand draw 10 cards how cool is that ladies and gentlemen that's amazing because then you just get a new hand now don't get me wrong sometimes you'll have a hand you don't want to discard so don't use it but when drampa was first revealed i made a video telling you how good the gx attack was and a lot of people quite rightly told me that they don't really want to use drampa's gx attack and i get that but everyone who's played Drampa has had that turn where they've got nothing in their hand and for one basic energy, they're back in the game. Even if your opponent ends you so you've got a six card hand rather than a 10 card hand, if you've got an unplayable hand and you're going to lose because you've got nothing to play, this could win you the game or at least stop you losing it this turn. It's phenomenal and great and brilliant and I love it. If you've got a hand you don't want to discard, don't play it. Don't use this GX attack.
But if you've got nothing, this can save you the game. It gets you a new hand of 10 cards, gets you set up. I mean, imagine playing a bridge at turn one to get all of your basics. This is, of course, only for the very brief window before it rotates in September. And then having just a rubbish hand with, I don't know, let's say you've got an ultra ball and a lightning energy in your hand. Well, great news. You just discard them both. And draw a new hand of 10 cards. I think Rayquaza is a phenomenal Pokemon. I think it's one of the best GXs we've had in a while. I think it is a flat out, hands down, no question, five Wossy card. I think people are going to make builds of Rayquaza, which just end up hitting ridiculous damage by turn two or three and just sweeping. I think people are going to have some success with this and win some very quick games. I don't think Tapu Bulu can compete with Rayquaza because it's nowhere near as fast. It's vulnerable to ability lock and it doesn't hit the higher numbers. I could be wrong. But I've read a lot of opinions about Rayquaza in the past 10 hours since I posted my video and nothing has convinced me that Rayquaza isn't an amazing 5 Wossy card. But ladies and gentlemen, go nuts in the comment section, be nice and remember, I know I posted the kind of rumour yesterday, but I had to do a video when it was confirmed, if for nothing else, when people are searching for Rayquaza GX, I want them to find this video with an image and a confirmed translation. So tell me what you think. And make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and so on, head on over to patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can do just that. And do check out my video game slash Dragon Ball Super channel, Wossy Plays. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.